Hi folks, Vin here from msiradio.com. MSI Radio, as always, seeking solutions. Now let's get straight into it. Eamon Gilmore is not only after putting his own foot in the soup, it seems he's also pulled um, Michael D. Higgins into the soup with him. And why do I say that? Because he's required by the Constitution to swear an oath under God, and he and Higgins apparently are both agnostic. Agnostic, pardon me. So therefore, if you are agnostic, you cannot possibly swear an oath under God. It's impossible, right? Because you would be invalidating the oath. It's a requirement. It's constitutional. It's a requirement that you believe in God or that you make your oath under God. But if you do not believe in God, how can your oath possibly have any validity? It simply cannot. Now, Gilmore came out on RTE Radio uh, after, in fact, this video was posted as well. Let's, well, let's say we don't know whether this video directly had anything to do with it or not. Maybe it did. Maybe it was all about Michael uh, Nugent's article, but uh, I have my suspicions. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think, um, yeah, I think Harry from We The People, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, Paul, thanks. Uh, just a question, you know, all the oaths are taken under God, under the Constitution, is that correct? Um, are you talking about the oaths taken in, in, in the doll? Yeah, um, in, in the Oireachtas, you know, the Constitution states, you know, it's all under God. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll double check that for you. Um, I think that's the case, but it's yeah. not uh, an answer I have at my fingertips here. Oh. Now, this was a phone call Harry made from We the People uh, to the Oireachtas, and there's the YouTube link there. I'll put the link in the description. You can have a look and you can have a listen yourself. Uh, so Harry from We the People made that call, and um, no real uh, affirmative answer came. So the question, I suppose, is. Have they vacated their office? I would suggest not only have they vacated their office if they're in office now, but they can't possibly have entered office. They can't possibly. It's a requirement that it's under God. Now, what I'm going to show you here is, this is, I went to um, the literal translation. There's the link at the top there. Again, I'll put that link in. This is the direct literal translation of Bunreik Nairn. And uh, I've done a search, a word search for the word God. And there are 121 uh, mentions of God. In uh, This is the direct literal translation. I'll let you have a look here. See? Uh, Michal O'Karul. And uh, forward by Brian Lennon, TD. And um, as I said, if you skip on through to uh, God being mentioned, uh, it tells you the Irish, the English, and the direct translation are as direct as they can be, I suppose. Uh, and you'll see God just keeps appearing in the presence of God, see? So, if if Gilmore does not believe, or in fact, um, uh, uh, Michael D. Higgins does not believe in God, which they have said so, then they've stumbled right here, in the presence of Almighty God. They, what are they going to, in the presence of Almighty what? In the presence of, I do solemnly swear, in the presence of what? What are they suggesting they are making oath under? Not the people. It's a requirement in the Constitution. I mean, it's that simple. They are not in office. Their office is invalid. Anybody who follows orders from these people, from now on, could find themselves guilty of misprison of treason, because I think if uh, Gilmore and Higgins are not in office, then to swear an oath, to enter office, to be president, clearly... As a, an agnostic, you are committing treason against we, the people. Now, I know many of you may not be aware of this one. This is from SovereignRepublicOfVera.com forward slash SROI forward slash scan dot PDF. And this, of course, is the constitution that you've never been able to see up until now. This was the actual constitution uh, for, written from 1916 to 1919 in Vaughan's Hotel. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to find out, I'm just going to locate the preamp. Okay, so, uh, the Constitution of the Republic of Air, Ireland, this is for the Sovereign Republic of Vera, to the Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, we, the people of Ireland, dedicate our Constitution and beg thy guidance of the Holy Spirit that it may be in consonance with thy divine will and contribute to thy greater glory. 
Amen. This constitution shall be the constitution of the Republic of Ireland, proclaimed in arms on Easter Monday, April 24th, 1916, and established by the will of the people of Ireland on January the 21st, 1919, which of, of course was at noon in the Mansion House in Dublin. The sovereignty of the nation is inalienable. It is therefore not within the competence of any generation of the people to surrender that sovereignty which each generation holds in trust for the nation. The question of surrender of national independence may not be submitted to an electorate. Subject to that fundamental principle, it is hereby declared that all authority in Ireland, legislative, executive and judicial, and all powers of government, are derived solely under God from the people of Ireland. These powers are inherent in the people alone, alone by virtue of their sovereignty. The people are sovereign, not the executive. <laughs>